So let me talk about today's guest. We are delighted to have a repeat return visit from Rebecca Alfred from Charles. And so today we're going to be talking about five steps to successful online raffles. And we're going to talk about how you can transform an online raffle into a tool that not only brings in ticket sales, but also a list of new donors and marketing data that can show you exactly where you need to focus for success. Who is Rebecca, you ask? Good question. She's going to tell you a lot more about herself, but know that she's part of the team at Trellis, so to my surprise, and they support charitable organizations, hospitals, foundations, nonprofits, and others to find new online approaches to raising funds to the causes that you all work for. Rebecca has supported hundreds of organizations as they run fundraisers with specialized expertise in signature fundraising events and donor experiences for virtual and hybrid fundraisers. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to our guest expert for today. Rebecca Alfred, please throw your clap emojis into the chat. It is so good to be here with all of you today. So thanks so much for joining. But before we get started, I wanted to make you a promise. By the time that this call ends, I'm guaranteeing that you will have written down at least three notes from my talk. And if you don't, I need you to message us in the chat and tell me. And I'm just going to keep throwing tips at you until you all have something written down. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous about that promise I just made, but actually hold me accountable. You've just given up one hour of your day, so it's my goal to make this so valuable for you. And I'm really excited to start because we've got some really effective tactics to help you grow your raffles by 15% more than you did last year. And regardless of if you're new to raffles or if you've been doing them for years, this section is for you. But before we get started, I wanted to share a quick story with you about an organization that completely shifted their raffles and they saw the benefits. One of the organizations that we have done raffles with in the past, or one of the organizations we worked with, they'd done raffles in the past and they actually had really great success. Their first year they hit their first year they hit their fundraising goal and wanted to see the same success again. But this last year was different. Last year they didn't know a lot of the people that were participating in their raffle. And they didn't have an easy touch point to connect with them afterwards. Mm. They feared that a lot of people were coming for their raffle and not necessarily to support them, which at the end of the day, it allowed them to hit their goals, but it didn't solve their need to grow their donor base and educate more people about their cause. So as they looked at their raffle this past winter, they decided they needed to make some changes. And so they did. And they raised 15% more by incorporating three specific elements. One, they talked about their why and what the dollars raised would support for their organization. They highlighted their sponsors, giving them recognition and encouraging them to share the word too. But most importantly, and thirdly, they added in an additional donation ask when ticket purchasers were checking out. And they, with that, they raised an additional $36,000 for their organization. That's 1,600 new donors that they'll now be building relationships with and they'll turn into longtime supporters for their cause. Now, I'm telling you this story so you can think about what's going to be possible for your organization. You might not have a massive fundraising team or a big donor base, but with the five steps I'm going to share with you today, you'll also be able to raise 15% more like this organization did. And if all of this is new to you, no worries. We've got some really actionable steps for you to take along the way too. To help make sure that I'm giving you the best possible information, I'd love to know who's joining us today. And so if you wouldn't mind just throwing it in the chat, I know most of you have already. Have you run an online raffle before for your organization? And what is your organization name? You can just give me a quick yes or no. I know most people already did. So if you didn't already, then feel free to throw it in now. Awesome. I see Eli has not run a raffle himself, but he's participated in a few. Awesome. I know we've got Kirk here who's done some raffles in the past, uh, doing some raffles right now. I think we had a few other people that were doing it. So I think we're pretty mixed group today, actually. That is awesome. So here is where I would like to go. Let's briefly review how you can streamline your application process. We're going to dive into ticket strategy and designing a raffle page to help you sell more. We're also going to talk about marketing your raffle. And then by the end, we'll be talking about how you can set up your ticket purchasers for success. 
Throughout the session, I also want to share real-life examples and ideas from organizations that have succeeded. My goal for our time here is that you'll walk away with clear next steps on how to launch your next raffle to raise more than you have in the years past. In addition to all of that, we have put together our guide of 25 marketing tactics to make your raffle stand out. In this talk, we will cover our favorite marketing tactics, but the guide has so many more. So you can use the link that is going to be thrown into the chat momentarily, or you can use the QR code on the screen to download your guide now. What I'd like to say is think about this talk like step one, and then the guide is step two. We cover raffle strategy in this talk, but the guide includes how-to steps, quick ideas to implement into your next raffle, even if it's already up and running, and more guides and templates and insights from our raffle experts. But before we get into that, maybe we should start with who we are. We're from Trellis. We build fundraising software for raffles, 50-50s, events, and auctions, and we work exclusively with nonprofits and charities. We build tools to help charities with all of their events, from galas to golf tournaments and standalone campaigns and fundraisers like a raffle or a 50-50. Hundreds of charities have run fundraisers on Trellis, and we have learned a ton from their successes and failures. So I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favorite tips to make your raffle a success. I'm Rebecca, and I'm here with one of my colleagues, Zoe, who's hanging out in the chat. So if you have any questions at all, roll them in there. She can help answer your questions right away. We will also be saving some questions to the very end for our Q&A. My team and I were joining from the unterritory of the Sioux people, and we wanted to just take a moment here to recognize the land that we all get to live and work on. Okay, let's get started. Now, our first step is here is really just to set the stage. So hold on, we are going to fly through this one. But first up, let's talk about streamlining your application process. Because we're going to go through this one really quickly, though, if you have any questions at all, just make sure to throw them in the chat. First, to make your application process a breeze, you need to understand the rules in your area. Once you know the rules that apply for your community, you can best plan for your raffle for, the, for your organization. Some questions you'll need to answer before getting started right away are, one, do I qualify for a raffle in my province and state? And then two, what are the different license types and requirements or differences for each one? Finally, I would look into how long does it take for you to apply for a license? If this is all new to you, we would encourage asking for help. Platforms like ours, Trellis, we can help set up your raffle and make sure that you're applying for the right license. Our team has actually built a super helpful quiz that Zoe's also going to throw into the chat right now. And that's going to help you determine what's the right raffle license for your organization. We like to call it, what raffle license type are you? But it's basically just our two minute fun quiz that's going to just help point you in the right direction of what you should be looking for and applying for based on your marketing budget, your fundraising goals, and where you live right now. Again, before I move on, I would love to just throw it up here again. If you have any questions at all, throw them in the chat, and we'll definitely get to them at the end. So once we know our license type, the next big question is picking the right type of raffle and building out a foolproof ticketing strategy. Again, I wanted to start with the basics. So here, let's talk about the three types of raffles we're going to focus on today. The first one is the 50-50. Okay, our first one, 50-50, and here are a couple of reasons why we love it. You don't need to secure a big prize for this one. Your ticket money is the prize, and as you're raffling off money, it appeals to a really wide audience. It's ideal for organizations that are doing the standalone fundraiser. Next raffle type I wanted to mention was the multi-prize, which is a raffle with multiple prizes, as you probably guessed. With this one, you can get people really excited about a chance to win one of multiple prizes. It's a great way to engage others like sponsors with your organization as you can create a handful of really exciting prizes for people to win. It's ideal for organizations that are incorporating raffles into a larger fundraiser like an event. You can do a last ticket call during the event and then announce your winners during the event as well which will help you boost last sales and also build hype as you're about to present the winner. And then finally, I wanted to mention the single prize raffles, where you only have one prize available to win. With this raffle type, you're attracting people around a very specific prize as you're only focusing on one thing. 
And with that, you can get something really amazing. This raffle style works really well for organizations doing both a standalone as well as part of a larger fundraiser for the organization. With this one, I would just say put a lot of effort on trying to get the right prize for your best chances to engage your ideal target. And so now once you've decided what raffle to run, the next question we always get asked is around time frame. So we so make sure to write this one down for your notes. This is what we recommend. For raffles that are standalone, try a six-week window for people to buy tickets. And if your raffle is part of an existing fundraiser, then I'm named to have it open for about four weeks leading up to the event. Both of these timeframes are going to give you more than enough time to promote the raffle and then also give your purchasers multiple touch points and reminders to engage and also encourage repeat ticket purchasing. So now that we know what type of raffles we have, as well as how long we should be looking, running them for, how can you strategically sell more tickets? Here are my top five tips to sell out. First, start by deciding how many tickets you think you can actually sell. To start, think about past experiences with this group. How much do they like to spend or donate at a time to your cause? How much do you think people would be interested in giving for a raffle ticket? And if you haven't done a raffle before, that is all good. Take a look at what some other organizations are in your area are doing and maybe try charging your raffle tickets around the same price point as them. And our second top tip would be encourage people to buy larger ticket packages with discounts. Everybody loves a good deal. Think about how you can incentivize people to buy more tickets by giving a discount. In this example, do we have an example? There we go. In this example, the organization has three different ticket packages. Their first is one for 20, their next is three for 50, and their final is 10 tickets for 100 bucks. So with that last package, the value of your ticket is actually only $10 each. This tactic helps your purchaser save a few dollars while also increasing their chances of winning, but ultimately it's going to get you closer to hitting your fundraising goals. Next up, think about incorporating early bird prizes for early sales. Without a doubt, early bird prizes lead to early sales. Explore what kind of prizes and incentives you want to give your ticket purchasers to increase the number of people buying tickets early on in your campaign. And as an added bonus, it's always much easier to sell tickets when you've got an established plot. Always use this to your advantage to encourage more people to keep buying tickets even after the early bird prizes are finished. Another great way to encourage more ticket sales is to limit the amount of best value ticket packages to encourage quick sales to increase your pot size. Actually, I would recommend taking a screenshot of this page right now on my screen so you have this idea for your next raffle. With this ticketing strategy, one of the keys to success will be building excitement and a sense of urgency to get people to participate quickly. Only after a limited quantity for your best package option or sorry, only offer a limited quantity for your best package option to incentivize people to get in on the action early and really start to drive those initial ticket sales. Finally, and probably my favorite idea when it comes to increasing your fundraising success, the raffle is adding a donation upsell to your raffle. Or if you're also running other elements for your fundraiser, seamlessly incorporating other fundraising drivers all in one place. Just as a side note, it is crazy to me that more organizations aren't doing this, but you can be the ones to start the trend and make this happen. So first, let's talk about donations. When your raffle ticket purchasers are buying their tickets, ask them if they'd like to make an additional donation to your cause. Not including a donation upsell when people are checking out from buying raffle tickets is a missed opportunity. Let's think about it this way. If you have a raffle that usually raises $500,000, let's say that's 10,000 ticket purchasers. Now, imagine what it would look like if 15% or 2,000 of them also made a donation. Or what about if your raffle usually raises $75,000 from 750 donors? Now, 15% of those donors would be 250 people. If you had 250 new donors, what would that mean for your organization? That's 250 more people to reach out to during your other annual campaigns, 250 more relationships to build, and 250 more donors with unending fundraising potential. 
Hey, Rebecca, Eli here. I'm getting some questions just asking for a little bit of a, maybe an example of a donation upsell, just to be really clear about the concept. Yeah, absolutely. A donation upsell would be when people are checking out, asking them, do you want to make an additional donation on upon checkout? So they already put their ticket, their raffle tickets into their cart, but then when they're continuing their checkout, it asks them to make an additional donation. Awesome. Thank you. Does that help, Patty? I'll give you 30 seconds to type. Yeah, it's like when your common example is you're buying fast food and they say, do you want to add fries and a large drink with that? Essentially the same concept, but we're saying you just bought your raffle ticket. Do you want to also add a donation in here as well? And that additional donation ask is going to encourage people to continue supporting your organization, but ultimately helping you guys raise more money. Yeah, it would be dependent on the platform. What is crazy to me is Trellis is actually the only platform that does do this. So we offer this for sure. So it would be dependent on what platform you guys are using, but it's a great way to encourage people to, to continue supporting your organization. Sorry, I did not have the chat visible to me, so I need to change how I'm looking at this so I can see the chat at the same time. There we go. Awesome. So as you're thinking about it and as you're thinking about the different ways that you can raise more money, adding something like a donation upsell is going to really encourage them to continue supporting what you're doing. And when it's all in one place, you can make it really easy for your donors to purchase. Your donors will also be much more likely to add multiple things to their cart when they can buy a raffle ticket Maybe you're also doing an event and they can buy event tickets or bid on auction items all in one place. I am loving seeing these questions in the chat. I'm just going to quickly read yours as well, Chantel. And then let's see if we want to save it for the end or if not, I can hop into it right away. They would. Awesome. Yes, I see Zoe and Eli beat me to it. Let's definitely answer that in the Q&A. Great question though, Chantel. And now let's move on to step number three, which is all around designing your raffle page. And again, how can you design your page to help you raise more money? So we all strive to make really great first impressions. And we think that it should be no different when you're fundraising events and campaigns. And your branding and fundraising page will essentially be your first impression. Now that we're thinking about fundraising pages slightly differently, how can you make your first impression or your fundraising page design amazing to ultimately help you sell more? So again, here are my top three ideas. And the first one would be start with some catchy and engaging images. Use images that encourage people to keep scrolling or inspire them to learn more about what you've got going on like this one from Lakes New Works. Their image gets people excited about their fundraiser and with the title of the campaign right next to the picture, I'm curious to keep scrolling to learn more. Next, I always encourage people to talk about your why. We've done a lot of research on the donors and a common trend we continue hearing is donors choose to support causes they care about and the causes that resonate with them. So, Use your fundraising page as an opportunity to educate more potential donors around what your cause does and why. Talk about what you do, the impact of donations and the funds for your cause, and share some success stories from those who benefit from your cause to inspire others to keep supporting you through raffle, raffle ticket purchases or other means. Finally, highlight your sponsors. Now, this is really going to have two benefits for you. First, your sponsors are generously supporting your cause, but usually looking for ways to get some value in return. Promotion of their involvement is the easiest way to do this, and you can use your fundraising page to highlight your sponsors. Secondly, when your sponsors' logos and links to their website are on your fundraising page, they are much more likely to share it with their networks too. So again, it's going to open you up to so many more potential ticket purchasers than hopefully you had before. So I know that's quick and I know we're moving really fast here, but again, three quick ideas that will hopefully help you design your fundraising page slightly differently. And we're just going to pause here for a short second. If anybody has any questions, now is a great time to throw it in the chat. So we've just covered how to streamline your application process, ticketing strategy to sell more tickets, the importance of raffle page design, and some ideas to help you get started. We have two more sections to cover. And the first up is how to market your raffle. We have found some really cool ideas around event marketing, 25 to be exact, which you can all find in our guide. So if you haven't yet, I'm just going to ask Zoe to throw the link for the guide into the chat one more time. And then you guys can all grab that as well. And hopefully it gives you some more ideas as you're getting started. 
But before we do that, or why don't we still jump in and we can talk about how this works for you guys. And first, I thought maybe we could start by separating out your donors. First, your current donors and organization supporters. So now you're already doing some marketing and promotion to get the word out. So instead of me telling you that there's a better way you can be doing it, honestly, all I'm going to say is do what's working for you. And that looks different for everybody. But here are some more ideas that you might want to try out that could hopefully continue to engage your current donors and organization supporters. And the first would be to celebrate the milestones. 10,000, 25,000, 100,000. When you hit those big milestone numbers in your raffle, send an email blast to all of your current donors and encourage them to buy more tickets and share it with their friends. This is a great way to remind people that haven't bought tickets yet to get in on the action and encourage people to buy more tickets. And also expand your network when they share with their friends. And hey, at the same time, this is a really great opportunity to highlight your donation upsell to bring in a few more dollars for your organization too. The next group I wanted to focus on getting in front of is new ticket purchasers. This is where you'll have to start expanding beyond your usual circles to help get the word out. And a couple places are here. So first, I would start with your board members, your volunteers, your staff, prize sponsors, and any key donors, or as we like to call this group, your event partners. Give them a Dropbox with ready-to-post social media graphics and suggest captions to make it really easy for them to promote your raffle. Or encourage them to reshare your social media posts with their followings too. Secondly, I would look at some third-party marketing platforms. One we love is Home Lottery News. They're working in most places across Canada right now, and they are phenomenal at sharing the word. Or maybe you've got a sister or a partner organization. Find some ways that you can collaborate with them. Encourage them to send this raffle to their email newsletter list and put it on their social network. And then let them know that for the next their next fundraiser, you're going to do the same. Cross-collaboration and I'm working with other organizations is a great way to continue increasing how much you're able to raise. And another key is learning from what you're doing. And this applies to all of your ticket purchasers. The ultimate key to success will be figuring out what you did well and how you can do it again. Thinking about your different marketing strategies in your channels, what you're going to want to do is track where your direct sales came from and ask how you and ask where your donors came from as well. So first, let's talk about asking your donors. To do this, add a custom link to the checkout process to ask how they heard about your event. Use this information to watch which channels are working and you can put more time and effort there. Second, and to get a better idea of why your ticket purchases are coming, we would recommend adding affiliate link so you can see how much money was raised through each channel. Like the feature we have on Trillist, you can, I was just making sure that my screen is showing there, thanks for it. Like the feature we have on Trello, so you can create a different link for each channel. So one for social media, a new link specifically for your email signature, or maybe you want that you give out to your board members so they can use it to share the raffle with their network. You can also take it one step further and you can create a little competition out of it amongst your volunteers or your board or any other people and create a specific link for each person and see who brought in the most ticket sales. At the end, you could give a prize to the person that had the most amount of sales tied to their custom link. Once you've collected this information, use this data to make better marketing decisions about your next fundraisers. Focus more on the things that brought in the most money for your organization and hopefully saved you the most amount of time. Again, don't be afraid to make changes as you go. I know some of you have raffles that are going to be launching any day now. And so you've already got some marketing tactics in place that you're hoping to implement. Look at how those are going for you and then figure out what's working and how what isn't working. And as your raffle continues, adjust your schedule accordingly. What else? Does anybody else have any other marketing tips or best practices when it comes to marketing that they wanted to share? If so, if you want to throw them in the chat, that'd be great. We can all just learn from one another around some things that have worked in the past for you, if that is for a raffle or just a fundraiser in general. And while you're doing that, I'm going to move on to our last section. Let's talk about how to set your donors up for success. Successful raffles will have a lot of transactions, and that means a lot of website traffic and awareness. But with all of your fundraising page traffic, you want to make sure that your potential 
purchasers and donors aren't quitting because they can't easily make it through a purchase. And there may be even some challenges donors bring to your attention, so don't be alarmed if this happens. But to help mitigate any trick it pack purchase or raffle issues, while that is hard to say, talk to your software platform and find out what kind of support they're going to provide for your purchasers. Another way to increase your donor support is to send your ticket purchasers all the details they need right away. Itemize receipts of the purchases, official raffle tickets, and maybe even donation tax receipts if they've made a donation at the same time of purchasing a ticket. Again, you shouldn't have to worry about this. Instead, look for a platform that's going to do all of this work for you. Again, you can also set, create some instructional videos, making it easy for people to understand how and what they need to do, again, to continue their purchase. Okay, that was a lot of information, so hopefully everybody is still doing okay. But I would love to do a quick review of everything that we've just talked about. And there's actually one other key piece that I haven't mentioned yet that might actually be the most important, so let's also get there. But so far, we've covered the following. Streamlining your raffle application process. So we talked about knowing the rules to running a raffle, questions to ask, and finding software partners or raffle experts to answer your questions. Then building a foolproof ticketing strategy. Planning your sales goals from past experiences, or looper tickets, incentives, and limited quantity value-based packages. And then by far, my favorite idea to increasing the amount that you're able to raise and adding that extra 15% would be using donation upsells, encouraging more donations from your ticket purchasers. You can also use this to encourage ticket purchasers to become longtime donors for your cause, which again, the opportunities to grow your donor base are truly endless. And hey, even better if you can find a platform that can also help with your tax receiving at the same time. Next, we talked about designing your event page to help you sell out. Using engaging images, sharing the why behind your cause, and highlighting sponsors. Then marketing your raffle, engaging current and past donors to your cause, and using an extended network through event partners to find new ticket purchasers. And again, this key, the key here is learning what's working for you. Setting up tools like custom questions in the checkout or affiliate marketing links to learn what is working for you. And then we ended by talking about setting up your donors for success creating resources to help t raffle ticket purchasers through their experience, but ultimately finding a trusted raffle platform that can help with everything from supporting your donors, helping your them through their ticket purchases, and sending over all key details like receipts and tickets as soon as a purchase is made. Now, if you've done a raffle before many times, or if this is your first one ever, you can see that there is a lot that goes into running a successful raffle, especially if you want to raise 15% more than you have in the past. But with the right software partner, we believe that you can accomplish all of these things really easily. And at Trellis, we've actually built our platform to do all these things for you. First, we've got a team of raffle experts. You can rely on them to assist with applying for your raffles and identifying the best options for your fundraiser. And by adding additional donation upsells or incorporating other fundraising elements into your page, you can raise 15% more than you have in the past. Trust me when I say that this is our number one way that you can raise more than you have in the past and engage your donors unlike ever before. And you may think that this is just one piece, but it alone has helped other organizations raise more. And I really wanted to do the same for you guys. Then also creating an engaging, engaging fundraising page, adding custom questions and affiliate links to help track your success and supporting your ticket purchasers as well. So by this point, you've probably done the following. One, you downloaded our guide, which is going to walk you through 25 or more ideas to raise more for your next raffle. You've hopefully all written down at least three notes in your notebook from this talk. And maybe you've already sent a, ta a text to your colleagues saying, we need to chat about our raffle marketing strategy based on what I've just learned. But we also know that this is a little bit like drinking from a fire hose. So to give you some more actionable steps before we end, maybe you can put yourself into one of these buckets. One, you already have a raffle fundraiser live and you're selling tickets. If that's you, make sure to download the guide so you can sell more tickets than you already were planning on. Two, are you an online raffle first-timer? Maybe you're brand new to raffles, or maybe you've only ever done them on paper before, so this is all feeling brand new to you. 
If that is, you can connect with a raffle expert and ask some questions, like I mentioned about today, to learn more about how you can set up your raffle for success. We're going to throw a link to connect with a Travelist raffle expert into the chat for you right now. Or maybe you're ready to take these new tactics and raise 15% more for your next raffle. If that's you, again, amazing. Use that link that Zoe just threw in the chat right now, or we will throw one on the screen in just a second here. You can connect with a raffle expert, or you can also send me an email, and I would love to chat with you about different raffle strategies to help you raise more. Again, I'm going to throw my link to my email on the screen here as well. And with that, let's open up the floor to some questions. I know that there is a lot coming in here. Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Zoe from the Trellis team. Can you hear me okay? We can, that's great. Thanks, Zoe. Sorry with the delay there. Okay, we'll kick it off with some Q&A. We had some great questions coming in as you were talking, so I'll just get started with the first one. But as we're answering these, feel free to keep putting questions in the chat because we'll power through as many as we can in the time that we have. So our first question, Chantel was wondering, do we, for the donation upsells, do we word it as adding towards your current cause or do we incentivize by referring to another donation project? Basically, are we asking them to just do a general donation or becoming monthly donors? You can really do whatever you want with that, Chantal. And, and it really depends on some of the goals for your organization. Some organizations, they like to just encourage people to give to just a generic donation fund or that kind of supports all areas of their organization. Or what we like to encourage people to do is to highlight some specific needs within your organization. I'm blanking on what kind of organization you said you are. Just scrolling up here in this track, because I know you told us. Yeah, so you were saying that you're working with individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Maybe we've got a donation, some different donation options people can select from. And the first one is $50 donation that goes towards buying some new computer equipment that people need. Or maybe it's $250 donation that goes towards a laptop for an individual. Or maybe it's 500 bucks and it supports the launch of a new program that's going to support more individuals with maybe some new resources as well. So when you talk about your donations in different ways and you highlight some of those different donation options with specific causes or specific uses of those funds, it tends to get people more engaged and they tend to want to give. Amazing. Yeah, Chantelle was also wondering that they're a new organization and they don't have any success stories quite yet. Would it be okay to show their projected impact on their fundraising pages? Sorry, can you just read that one more time? Sorry, oh, Zoe. Yes. I got distracted as I watched Chantelle's comment come in. Oh, no worries. Yeah, so they're a newer organization, so struggling with having enough success stories. Mm -hmm. So would it be okay to show their projected impact on their fundraising pages? Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, talking about projected impact, talking about the vision or the mission of the organization, I think also goes really far as well. The question I would ask as you're building out this page, Chantel, and then everybody else as well, is what's the story that we're trying to convey as an organization? What's the why behind what we get up and do every day when we go to work? How can we convey that? For some of you, you might have impact stories that you can share. Others of you, you might be talking about some of the reasons why you're choosing to do that. Maybe it's a personal story of why the organization started. And then as you start to get those success stories pouring in, switching them out, changing the content and how you talk about things is a great way to approach it. Nice. And for this question, I saw Eli put some suggestions in the chat, but I was wondering, Rebecca, if you had any suggestions for third-party marketing platforms that people could use. Absolutely. Yeah, I can see Eli jumped in here with the Google Ad Grants. That's awesome. Google Ads is a great way to do it. Google ad Ads can be a lot. I'll let Zoe speak to that. She's currently running all of our Google Ads. So there's a lot to learn. So if it's new to you, don't worry if you feel a little overwhelmed. That is normal. We all feel that. You can also look at Facebook ads. They do a lot of advertising too. It's a great way to get your name out there. Or then also looking at other ways that you can engage with your donors. So Maybe instead of going down the ads route, maybe we're trying email newsletters and different things like a third party wise though, Home Lottery News is who we love to work with. They're an amazing group and they work just on promoting raffles and helping people sell raffle tickets. So reaching out to them is a great way. And actually, if you download the guide, I think we've got Rick's contact details straight in the guide too. So you can just reach out to him directly around that or then local just like marketing agencies adding with them as well and there may be some that do some lower rates for nonprofits that they're working with nice and yeah so uh, you talked about really two really good elements which is the custom checkout questions and the affiliate mm -hmm. links how can somebody go about setting those up 
Yeah, absolutely. Super easy. Again, depends on the platform that you're using, but you should be able to add a custom checkout question when they're checking out. So maybe that question is, how did you hear about us? Or where did you find out about this fundraiser? Things like that. People can type in their responses. Maybe it's going to be one of five places. So we actually have a drop down so people can add it. If you're using a platform like Trellis, you should be able to do it in less than three minutes would be how that works. And then same with affiliate marketing links. They are a really great way to see without asking people to see where they're actually coming from. People would click on a link, let's say in your email signature, they click on the link and then from there they can go in and buy tickets and it's going to track what link they came from. And we can afterwards attribute how much money did each of those different sources raise. So it's a really great way to see what's raising, helping you raise the most amount of money for your organization. Again, we have tools to set up affiliate marketing links on Trellis. And so if you are interested, I know Eli just threw my email in the chat there too, or you can see my email on the screen. Shoot me a message and I'm happy to, to walk you through how something like that would work. Amazing. And uh, yeah, so you talked about those early bird prizes and how that works. So is there a best use of early bird prizes that you've seen? What your experience was the best use you've seen? Yeah, we're actually working with an organization right now, actually Lake City, who I mentioned in my talk, they're doing their next raffle with us. And what they're doing is they're doing a monthly early bird prize draw. So every single month for their campaign, I want to say their raffle is running for about six months total. Every single month, they're giving away a new early bird prize. I love the way they've structured it because what it's doing is it's encouraging people to go in early and start having a chance to win one of these early bird prizes. And of course, all of those people then entered into the grand prize as well. So doing something like that on a monthly basis is a really cool idea. If you've got a holiday coming up, so as we're getting closer to winter, and if you are looking at doing raffles, doing raffles that end a few days or weeks before Christmas is great because people love to, if they win stuff, to give those away or to give tickets, raffle tickets as a gift as well. Early bird prizes are a great way to do that and just planning your ticketing strategy around what's coming up or what makes sense for your organization and there's specific milestones that you guys may be hitting. Amazing. Yeah, that's a good example there. Okay, I'm coming down to my last question. So if anybody has any more, then please throw them in the chat. We'd love to get to them. So how can, you talked about you know, early early ticket sales lead to early sales. Sorry, I said that myself. Mm. <laughs> but how can you encourage people to buy their tickets earlier, accelerate those early ticket sales? Yeah, I think highlighting the savings that they can get when they do an early bird prize, talking about like how limited or exclusive the offer is that you're doing. Honestly, people just love having exclusive offers or things like that. And yeah, highlighting that I think is a really great way to go about it. Reaching out to your different markets that you may have, that could be one of the milestones you talk about with your current fund fundraising or like your current dollars, I should say. And we're doing an early bird prize. It's closing in two days. You have a chance to win X. And it's hopefully something that gets people really excited as well. Thank you so much for your time. Delighted to have you all be part of today's event. And, and I hope to see you at an upcoming event. Otherwise, enjoy your day. And, and whether that's a lunch hour or an afternoon, let it be good to you.